Discover your inner goddess and live up to your highest value and most abundant potential. Welcome to Grateful Goddesses, a podcast that empowers you to unleash your inner goddess and take the leap of faith to live your best life. Your guide, Karen Pulver, joins her fellow goddesses in soulful conversations about gratitude, personal growth, authentic living, and a bevy of topics affecting women today. Let's start the show with your host, Karen Pulver. Thank you for joining us, everyone, on Grateful Goddesses. So tell me, what is your story? What's your story? Think about your life. What types of experiences have you had? If you were to say to someone, tell someone your story, what would it be about? What kinds of roadblocks did you encounter? What wonderful surprises did you have? We all should write down our story because it can be very therapeutic. Our guest today has done that. Sandra Rodriguez McNell is a woman in spiritual being. She was born to Cuban immigrants living and working in New York City. At the age of 21, a serendipitous encounter launched her modeling career and transformed her life as she knew it. Before long, Sandra was traveling the world as a top international model. Four years later, at the age of 25, she married and moved to her husband's homeland, Jamaica, to start a family and build a successful jewelry business. The marriage ended after six years and two children. Sandra was left to pick up the pieces, both for her own well-being as well as for her children. She fell in love again, but after a blissful 10-year romance, she was again once again on her own, to start over and reinvent herself. After some time, she rekindled a romance that she had left behind, but this also was not meant to be. She has decided to use her experiences to comfort and guide those who are experiencing the same darkness that she herself has endured, fulfilling her lifelong dream as the best-selling author of Cuts of a Diamond, where she talks about her perspective on love, forgiveness, and human nature, and a writing coach helping to inspire women to embrace the power of self-discovery. She now leads her signature writing programs, Rewrite Your Story, designed to lead you through a journey of introspection, change the narrative, and celebrate the victories and the writer's muse, where she works specifically with change makers, new thought leaders, healers, and facilitators who want to anchor their message through writing their first book. Welcome, Sandra, to Grateful Goddesses. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. All the way from Jamaica. That's right. It's so nice to see you and to have you on the show. You. So your story, tell us a little bit about your story. Hmm. Okay, so where do I start? Um, born and raised in New York City. My family is from Cuba. Um, they left Cuba right during the revolution, went to New York City. And um, born and raised in New York City, my parents were super strict and very, very protective of us, uh, my sister and I. And then at the age of 21, I moved to Paris. I serendipitous encounter. Um, I was discovered, quote unquote, by a modeling agency. And off to Paris, I went at the age of 21. And it was a wonderful, wonderful career. Um, after being um, raised in a very Cuban heavily cultured environment and again very protected um and you know private school and everything and then all of a sudden going to paris was just such a big um eye-opening experience and exciting and 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 i had a great career i went from cover to cover big campaigns it was i'm five foot seven so it was mind blowing i was like what are these people seeing like i didn't get it but i just went along and had a ball um and and it was wonderful and then in 90 1990 south beach miami beach became the hub of the modeling industry and so I moved to south beach at the age of i was about 23 and, you know, small apartments, South Beach had just been, been cleaned up and, you know, there were models and um, RVs everywhere. It's just so surreal. Um, and so there I was modeling and I was there for a little over a year when I met my current ex-husband. Um, we were basically set up and within eight months I moved to Jamaica and I've been here ever since. So you have so, two... 
Yes. <laughs> you, have, you have two children. And I then what happened? <laughs> two grown children. They're okay. Two adults. They're adults now. Mm -hmm. um, and then once um, I had the children, they'd grown up, they'd gone off to university and all that. Um, and a series of, you know, patterns repeating mm -hmm. with relationships and, you know, decisions that were based off of, you know, obviously, you know, with, in retrospect, you could see, um, insecurities and, and a whole bunch of other influences. Um, I decided that I was moving to Los Angeles. I wanted to go far, far away where I didn't know anyone, where I could start fresh, where I could reinvent myself. And I was going to write my book, the book that I thought about writing for 25 years. And finally I said, okay, I'm doing it. And I kept saying it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And then went to LA, wrote my book. And after I wrote my book, I came back home. But I understand when you left your husband, mm -hmm. um, that was a pivotal moment. Can Absolutely. you tell us about that a little bit? Absolutely. So um, in, in 1997, I was married. We had small children. And uh, that's when I realized the marriage was working out. And the reason that I came to Jamaica was you know, no longer, I could not stay in, in the marriage. Um, it was just too much for me and I was very unhappy. I moved along, had a, um, another long-term relationship. And in my last relationship where we were together for about seven years, I started noticing that pattern after pattern, I was doing things that were making me unhappy. It was, it was affecting me physically. And that's when I said, I'm out. And it was a, you know, kind of just like a switch of the light that where I said, I'm, I'm out. And I just got out of bed. I had plan, I knew, I felt it coming. Um, I knew that something wasn't right. And at that time, the first time ever I prepared. And so I'd gotten a little apartment and I had only what I needed in the apartment um, for about three, four months while I was like preparing. Okay, I'm going to watch to see how this moves. And when I realized that it wasn't going in the direction that I knew I deserved and that was right for me, I got up and left. That took a lot of courage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, just to get up like that and, and leave, but, but you, you used how you felt inside. It wasn't working for you. And Absolutely. I, you know, as we talk today, if anyone is listening and they're struggling with that, I'm sure they want, you know, you'll, you'll be their inspiration of, of what to do for yourself. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. So yes. you wrote your book, if you can hold it up, Cuts of a Diamond. Uh, and it's your memoir. It's your story. It's my memoir. It's my spiritual journey through love and heartache and forgiveness and everything in between. It is everything that I experience in my life, but from a perspective of observation and not blame. I feel it's important that if you're sharing your story, you share your story and how it happened to you, how you felt about it, and look at it from, from all perspectives. And, and that's how you, you share a story that supports and helps others. Well, we're gonna bring on our featured goddesses now. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm curious about the title and how you chose it and, and what it means and sure. all things about the choice so, we made. Cuts of a Diamond, um, I had another title because you really don't choose your title until after you've written your book. And I realized that, you know, it really is about the cuts of a diamond. We are, we come to this world raw, not really, you know, knowing a lot and the, our life just, you know, cuts us and cuts different sides. And, you know, the longer and the more you live and the more experiences you have, you know, the, the sharper the cuts. And after a while, under pressure, you create this diamond. It is, you know, who you become through these journeys and you polish up and, 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 and when you stand for yourself, you shine. And so I also ha was in the jewelry business for 19 years. My family was in the jewelry business growing up. Jewelry is always in my life, and I write about it in my book. And so I felt it was important to connect the two. So Cuts of a Diamond was really born from both. Thank you. Thank you. I just realized as you said that, 
that makes total sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, a diamond, all the cuts, and then shining it and polishing it. And you talked about forgiveness. I personally struggle with that. I am learning. That's what this goddess journey is about. I'm learning from various guests. I'm learning from my featured goddesses that, you know, forgiveness. How do we do that? You had some very difficult struggles, yet you forgave people, right? Could you talk about that and forgiving yourself? Right. That, you know, and people think, you know, you just, you forgive and poof, everything is gone. And it's not. We are human beings and we are, you know, our nature is, you know, either anger or resentment or fear and all the things that come in our conscious mind thinking about things or we're triggered by a memory. And so it doesn't just go away. You don't like the, 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 the saying forgive and forget. And, and I'll mm-hmm. talk about that. But, you know, you do have to find a way to forgive and in order to forgive you, you let go. And, and when you let go, uh, it doesn't mean that it didn't matter or it didn't mean anything. You just have to find a way to have a faith to know that it happened and we need, we need it to move forward. And in releasing that um, anger or resentment or whatever the pain is, then we're le- releasing that energy flow within between you and that person or that occurrence or whatever it is that happened, you release it. And when you release it, you're able to let it go. And then forget comes because you're no longer attached to that thing that happened to you. I can't say that it's gone completely in all circumstances. I've been hurt so many times and many things do come up that remind me and upset me. And, and it's like a little bud or a weed that grows. We can't expect it to just be gone. It grows, it comes back and it's just for us to nurture it and, 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 and understand it and love it and, and, and allow it, but then let it go. Do you actually tell the person who has hurt you, I forgive you, or is it more within yourself to thank the experience, thank the person for teaching you, even as hard as it was, and then release it? I have done both. I have done the in, you know, personal forgiveness in your eyes, face to face. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> like what, a, what, you know, it's done. It's in the past and, yeah. and we all move with the best we can. You know, mm-hmm. we all have the tools that we have. We all have the experiences we have. And, and so I feel most of the times things are not done so intentional. It's done through ignorance possibly, um, but not so much intentional. And you have to, for me, just find that in your heart. Another, another, um, occasion that I, I forgave profoundly. I was listening to this movie, The Shack, and I was um, listening to the book, sorry, the audio book. And during this, the, the, the part of the, in the movie that he forgives, I was washing, actually washing my hands. And I just felt forgiveness wash over me, the water wash over my hands. And it was just such a physical feeling, a visceral forgiveness, a profound feeling of just washing away and I let it go. And then other times I just write the letter, I write about it, I, I tell the person how much I am unhappy and then I forgive and then I either burn it, I burn it and let it go. I've done that. I've, I've written letter, a letter to some pe- you know, different people and then I, that's, you know, saved somewhere, but I like the burning part. Yes. I do like that. Uh, Cam- Camille. Hi, thank you, Sandra. Um, so you mentioned in a cu- um, Cuts of a Diamond, a lot about human nature. What did you mean by that? So what I mean about human nature is how we are as human beings. You know, people say, okay, well, we're moving out of the 3D into the 5D and we're, you know, we're evolved and awakened and we forget that we're human beings. 
at the end of the day, we're human beings, we're conditioned. We have a lot of things that we have learned behavior. There's so much that we pick up, right? So those are the outer experience, the things that influence us. But as human nature, and you can see how clearly it is when you compare yourself to an animal, to a dog that is jealous or protective or nervous and excited. They're not conditioned to be that way. That's just the way they are. And so we have to remember that we're human beings and we have these natural you know, behaviors, these natural reactions. And we have to respect that. We have to have compassion for that. If we're going to have love in this world, we have to see all of us as human beings that are here on this planet and say, okay, well, you know, there's a level of human nature that is innate in us. And yes, we can work on it and we work through it and we grow from it, but it's there. It's there. It's something that is born in us. It's inside of us. Now, how did you decide how much to share or, or even to write your book? Cause you really, you share a lot. And so, um, like what gave you the courage to really share that much knowing that you might use it in the book, but also to courage, um, to coach others. I did not know what I was going to share, to be honest with you. I just knew I had a story and I wanted to share it with the world because again, when you're writing a book and when you're sharing your story, there's gotta be a purpose. There's gotta be a reason. I'm not, Oh, hey, got, by the way, this and this happened to me and ta -da! you know, it's really so that, there is a, a reason, there is a conclusion, there is a purpose. You're supporting others through their journey so that they don't feel alone. So if you're gonna write a book, it has to have that behind it. And so I had to keep that in mind. I had to remember, who exactly am I speaking to? Who am I really wanting to support? A lot of it was me five years before, four years before, and thinking about if I had this information or um, if I read this book, I would be able to go through it without feeling so alone and maybe possibly have the strength to, you know, cut the pattern sooner or, you know, break it faster because I'd see other people's journey. So for me, that, that really was the purpose. And I had to, I, I had support. I, I looked for someone to help me with my book writing, which I knew that if I didn't, it would take a long time. I wouldn't know where to start. I was feeling overwhelmed. I did try. <laughs> I really did try. And then I realized, no, I need the support and just being very, very clear. I mean, this is my story in this little book. And I was able to choose my words. That's one thing that I, I really feel it's important, whether you're in a conversation or you're writing something, choose your words, choose your words and be very mindful. I can tell you a whole story in a paragraph by being very mindful of the words I use and how I say it. And, and again, I have two grown children. I have people in my life that I adore that were gonna read it. And so I have to be very mindful of what I said and pointing fingers and blaming everybody and saying it was not gonna be helpful for anybody. I needed to make sure that I stayed on topic, stayed focused and shared what it was that I wanted to put out there to support others. Everything that you're saying really resonates with me. And I have just started my own journey of telling stories on stage with um, different groups who give you that opportunity. And you essentially have five minutes to tell this story. And um, you have, I mean, every single word you have to think about and you have to memorize it because um, well, that's part of the rules, but also like, I don't, I, I, I think that's the craft of storytelling as well is, um, to be able to, sh to speak succinctly in general. And so, um, like everything that you're saying is, is so important And my background's writing, my background's technical writing. So I try to make the, everything as concise as possible. And so these are, but I haven't worked with, um, a coach and so before, and like you really seem to have mastered this craft. Like, are there other suggestions for people who want to share their story? Like you gave a lot of good highlights. Like, are there, is there more like that you would want to share about how you get started on this journey of writing your own story? Absolutely. 
Um, there is just a number one, why? Why are you writing it? And if you stay in that space of why, then you remember to keep that, that place in your heart focused on the purpose of the writing. And when you are focused on the purpose of your writing, then you're able to stay within that, right? Mm -hmm. And then being very clear with your outline. And your outline, people are like, oh, okay, you know, just do your outline and write everything. It has to be very purposeful and it has to be very, um, spontaneous it has to be where and i put you through a, a, a process where you just write and write and write and write and there you find the juicy words because there is when you're not really paying attention you're not really thinking you're not over you know whelmed with the specifics so that and also being again being very clear on who you're talking to who it is that this is for that I can't, I can't express it enough. How is your reader going to be different after writing your book? And who would you say your audience is? Like, who were you envisioning? I was envisioning anyone who was making choices because yes, you want to be clear maybe on a demographic or an age or, or anything, but for me, it was anyone anyone who was finding themselves making choices and decisions around fear. Okay. I love that because sometimes, well, many times people would say to me, even with grateful goddesses, who's your audience? Who's your target audience? And, and I don't know, it bothers me sometimes when, when I get that question only because it's not like, I guess I could say women over 35, but I think it's more about, the actual, I don't want to say the word thing, but like, what is it that people are going through? The action, the, the feeling, and it's to help anyone at any age, right? Who is struggling or trying to find themselves or wants to be inspired or empowered and learn like from a guest goddess like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think we're all curious about the 90 days. Mm -hmm. part <laughs> and it is all the 90 day part the 12 that is listen we don't have to do if you're especially if you're writing a, a memoir you don't need to do research you know true it's all inside of us we don't need to go to a mountaintop and and leave people don't do that people don't take sabbaticals celebrities all these people don't leave their lives in order to write their book it's just the commitment to sit down and write your book and take the time to just be committed to that and only that. And for me, I'm able to do that because I am very focused and making sure that you're taking care of the task at hand this week and this week only. So you're not worried about what we have to do next week or what you had to do the week before. We have two meetings. The first one is instructions here. This is what you're doing. Stay focused, complete this. By the end of the week, are we on task? Have we completed this? Then we move along. And everything is connected to the next step and the next step and it all comes together. Um, I wrote three chapters in one day because I was already prepared. I already had, I'd done the homework. We don't start writing until I think week four or five. We are doing so many other, there's so many parts of a book that we forget. It's like, oh, this is right. But there's so many different parts and aspects of, of a book that need to be taken care of and need to be understood and shared um, and seen and felt before we even start writing our book. And once that is done, then the writing part is, is a breeze. So it sounds like you hold people accountable. I hold people to hold themselves accountable. Mm, right. But I can't. I'm like, you know, we have a service. You're not like the school teacher that says you didn't do your homework. <laughs> no, I just let them know that this is it. This is, yeah. the, this is week four. Right. We're doing week four this week. And if you don't do it, then you will not be balanced. But I find that my my clients get so excited because you see the result mm -hmm. you see everything you do week by week you're like wow i can't believe that i gotten this part done and, and and each part 
helps and supports the, the in self investigation around the topic that you're sharing as well. And so once all of that, it's exciting. They're like ready for the next class and ready for the next call because they're excited and they're not overwhelmed. So I find that, that making sure that you're doing what you need to do when you're on task is the motivation to stay. I think the feeling of being overwhelmed and, uh, can paralyze people oh. and they don't know where to start. Rachel? Um, so I just want to understand, you do coaching. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's a 90-day process. And, you, and again, assuming your client, you know, follows your lead and your structure. And by 90 days, you should have written your story, your life story. That's absolutely a thing. I wrote, I wrote my book in 90 days and I did not have the support that I offer because what I did is I, I saw, I experienced it and I said, okay, this would really help me uh, really retain the work and remember and have all of the, the other uh, support that I felt I could have used. And so I incorporated it and that's why I have the one-on-one, -on -one, which is different from what I had. And so, yes, it's, excuse me, it's one-on-one. -on -one. We meet and it is, we cover all aspects of the book. By the end of it, you have a complete manuscript and then I present you to my publishers as well. So that's also the exciting, I want to get it done. But it is, it's 90 days and it's, it's, it's a process that, that works and it's a process that really supports your journey in telling your story and, and hopefully creating something from it. And what would you say is the um, hourly commitment per week to like accomplish this? Okay, so in the beginning, um, the first two, three weeks, we probably spend about four to five hours a week, including our two hours together. So it's really, you know, fill in the blanks, fill this out, answer these questions, respond to this. And so it's not so heavy. Um, actually, the whole process is, is not a heavy process until you're starting to write. And there are times that it's, and then you also allocate specific times for writing each chapter because you've learned what works for you. So you know, there are times, obviously, there are times that you're running around and they're like, I remember spinning around my apartment and spinning and spinning and spinning. Oh my God, what am I going to write? How am I going to get this out? I don't know. And go through the overwhelm and then it comes and you, you, you write it. You, you get it down. It sounds like, you know, the writer's block that people talk about. You help them through it. You hold their hand and you, you just say, we're going to do it. Um, yes. I, I want to sign up. I don't know. It sounds great. Oh, it's uh, personal question, which, you know, was not on my list today, but um, so if I write in journals, I have a stacks of journals from since I was a little girl. Do you ever work with people like that, that we could pull out stories or I could use that as research into myself to write my memoir? You can use it as, as research, but what I tell people, and even if they have stuff, anything written down or if they've started, it's we're starting from scratch. Oh. We're starting from, from where the place that you are now and not so much from the person you are then writing it then. It's who you are now looking back. Looking back or looking forward or, or oh. sharing however it is that you want because it all right. comes up with, you don't, you're not, it all comes up and you're not, there's no same way for everybody because as soon as you start writing, as soon as you start investigating, things come up for you. But it's, of course, I mean, I would look back at pictures right? and I would use things that would remind me of those moments because I didn't want to leave anything out. So yes, you do your own research and you can go through your journals. But when we start to write, this is coming from your heart. And again, it's not so wrapped up in the thinking and the overwhelm. It's just trying to allow this process to go through you. And I might be mistaken, but I read somewhere that when a person finishes their story, do you give them a diamond? <laughs> 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 something like that. You do so, something. Yes. I have the Rewrite Your Story program. And in that six-week program, we rewrite 
our story. So we begin from the now and what our perspective is on what it is that we're thinking now and how we're feeling now. And then we change the narrative, we celebrate the victories through the process of writing, and then we rewrite your story and celebrate with a piece of jewelry. That you design? That we design together. Oh. So it's I a did. custom piece that you know we, we, we create based on where we are, a charm or something, anything that you want. I love um, that. That's used beautiful. as that symbol of celebration and victory. That's beautiful. Dina, you have a question. Um, so I'm just curious to know how many books you've written with clients and, 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 and are there ever times where the clients like stops midway or I can't do this. This is, you know, oh, yes. it's stuck and I just, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And, and what I do, what I have, happened? I have clients that are just, Get, Cause what gets in our way guys, what gets in our way every single time is fear. And so when we start seeing results and we start seeing the stack and then what happens is after you write your book, then you've got to share your book and you've got to tell people about your book and you've got to market your book. And there's so many different things that you need to do. And that fear does take over. So I've had um, two clients that have said, okay, I'm busy or I can't do it now. That's what happens to a lot of people when they start. Mm, I just don't have the time or I can't. And it's all the fear. So yes, I've had clients that have said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to stop. And then they call me and they're like, mm, can we start again? I said, check yourself, make sure you're okay. And you're ready to do this. But that's the first thing that we do is we make that commitment. We make that decision. We say, yes, okay, this is what we're doing and we're committed to it. And that's where, you know, money does become that thing. You know, you join the gym, you pay the subscription, you're going to the gym. If you have a free membership, <laughs> you go sometimes or you don't go. And, but when you have that exchange, that really changes everything for you. So I have over a dozen books and you know, some have been published and some people don't want to publish. You can publish on Amazon and self-publish or you can go through a publisher. Um, so it's, that's all part of your, your personal choice. I have a question though about those relationships that you're talking about, like that fear of, I, I think about that, like that fear of exposure and um, you know, even like my husband or my children didn't sign up to have these stories shared with the world, yet there really is something inside of me that wants to share these stories because they're learning. They're, it's not like a moment for me just to point the finger, like, I can't believe you did that. It's also my ownership of creating this situation and, you know, all the, all the thinking that I've done about different conflicts and, you know, what I own and what the other person owns. Um, have you had, did you have issues with that? Like sharing? Of course. With Absolutely. I, I changed everybody's names first. <laughs> and then, um, yes, I had to be very, very, very mindful. I live in Kingston, Jamaica. I see these people, right? It's a small community. I go out and people see me and there's, oh, there's Sandra. And, and people were dying. That's the most interesting thing is that people were dying to read my book because they're like, what, you know, dirt is she going to share about so-and-so and so-and-so because people seen me in my relationships. And they're like, oh my gosh, you didn't do that. You did not make anyone, and my editor said it to me, it's like everything you've been through, you can't say that any of those people were bad people. And it was all based on how I shared it. What I said and what the words we use, again, are so important. It's not, he hurt me, it's, I was hurt by. Mm -hmm. Right there, right there. You change the dynamic of that share, that storytelling. And again, no one in, in Jamaica or anybody in the world, although I tell you in very clear words in my story and I share specific pain, what I've been through, 
it's, it was my story and how it felt for me and not anybody else's. So I don't talk about anybody else in the book. I talk about my personal experience and how it felt for me. I think it's so powerful that you say just the writing itself can be quite therapeutic. I know that when I was going through some troubled times, different times throughout my life, whether it be grief or sadness or upset or even happiness, I love to write it in my journal. It just feels so good. And even to write a letter to someone and then burn it, or <laughs> it just feels so good. What is that process though in your body? It's, I know you mentioned it somewhere in your writing. There's an actual third eye connection. Can you talk about that a bit? So in, in my, my book writing process, and I, and I share it in my workshops, and I share it with um, friends and in all of my, my programs, I put you through a, a meditation. And in that meditation, we go through a process of just getting, finding clarity and getting really in touch with our senses and how we're physically feeling. And through that process, you get very centered. After that process, I put you through some prompts. I ask you questions around the meditation. And again, you find another level of clarity. And it is a connection through your chakras that is just happens spontaneously just because of being connected, just like when you're meditating and you get very present in the moment and you find that quiet and you're only focused on whatever the guide is telling you or whatever you're putting yourself through during the meditation. You can be silent, but you have to be reminding yourself, be silent, be silent, be silent, be focused, be quiet. There's that, that word. And so that process is what really supports that, that quiet. And then you're able to go back to that meditation whenever you're, you're ready because it, it brings back the memory. It reminds you of really, really the intention behind the writing. Before we move on to another topic, about Sandra with her passions. Is there anything else that you have questions relating to this, her book? Okay. Um, so I would like to ask about your modeling career. It sounds so exciting. It sounds fun. So why did you stop? So it was wonderful. I stopped because I got married. I got married, we, we met, I was living in South Beach and we met in October. This, is, this month marks 29 years since that day. <laughs> um, and I came to Jamaica and I started coming because that's, that's how it really happened. He was living here and uh, from a very powerful, wealthy family. And it was, you know, I was just basically kind of just taken here. You're now belong to us. And so I, I didn't have a say, really, really. It was, I was here and we were getting married. Within eight months of meeting, I was walking down the aisle. I was, we met five months later. I was, in, I was actually in Japan. After we met, I had a contract in Japan and we exchanged via fax. Every single day, I'd run to the agency and I'd pick up the fax. I have every single one of them every single one of them are love letters back and forth. And I cut my contract, came back to Jamaica and it was like, okay, proposed. And my father-in-law said, okay, you're getting married on June 20th. It's my 60th birthday and we'll have a celebration. My mother-in-law was ill. Another thing, my mother-in-law was dying of cancer. And so she, it was almost a um, farewell for her. She's somebody that was very beloved here in Jamaica. So I was just kind of like an invited guest. It was, you know, the reason to have people fly in from halfway around the world to see her one last time. A wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, very kind and very charitable. But that was, that was the reason for that. And, and, and that wedding created some solace and some you know, distraction for what was happening in the family. And, and, and that was it. it my life just disappeared. <laughs> Basically, it was just like, all done. Do you ever think back that maybe you'd like to visit that again? I mean, you are absolutely beautiful and radiant. So um, thank you. So I, I can't say enough about that. Your presence is just so positive and beautiful. Thank you. I love, love, love modeling. I absolutely love it. 
And so what I do is I do shoots every once in a while for my social media. That's the only part that I enjoy. And the photographer and I will go off somewhere um, and I bring a couple of outfits and we do it and I enjoy it. And if, if someone said, do you want to do it professionally again? I would. I absolutely love it. I enjoy it so much. Um, and it was a great experience for me. So I don't have negative memories around my modeling career. I had female agents that were very protective. It was very professional. I worked a lot. And so the entire, all the memories and all of it around modeling, and I didn't go after it. That's another thing. It wasn't like, ah, I want to be a model. So I didn't pursue it. So it all was positive. So yeah, I, I love it and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Dina? Um, I was curious about other passions you have or other things that make you happy in life. I mean, clearly your coaching and your writing and your love of modeling, but are there other, other parts? I love, I, you know what I love? I love supporting others and being in a space where someone can call me, feels comfortable to say, hey, listen, I'm going through this and, and have a conversation, just free conversation. And you don't know what comes up. And then a lot of the times you're speaking to someone that I go, oh my gosh, thank you. And you're like, for what? Like, I didn't, I really didn't do anything. And it's just being holding space for someone. I know that word gets, or those words get thrown around a lot, holding space. But it, there's a lot of power that comes from that for the person you're holding space for because they're, they're actually being heard and they are hearing themselves. Um, I love to take a drive and see the mountains. Sometimes I just go to Ocho Rios just for the drive because the mountains here just, make me so happy. Um, and I love being with my, my adults, I call them my adults. I love being in their presence and cooking for them and being there for them. And, and those are really my passions, my, my, my pet and gratitude, just being in, in gratitude, really. And that you think about it, it's just being in that flow of things are hard, you know, especially with what's happened in this time and in this experience that we're all living and just finding the gratitude that, and, and that practice of being in gratitude is something that I really love. And then I love house music. <laughs> What's your favorite song? Oh my gosh, I don't know right now a favorite song. Okay. So I think we're all nodding our heads that we're going to sign up. <laughs> Camille. Um, I just had one question. Since you brought up about when you got married, you kind of lost yourself in the marriage. That's very common sometimes that happens when people get married or when women get married. What were, like looking back, were there any signs where you noticed like, oh, this is when it started happening or when I should have made a different turn and maybe just kind of even what advice you would give to someone else that might be starting noticing, hey, wait, I'm losing myself in this relationship. Yes. Uh, for me, this starts before you get married. Mm -hmm. This starts with conversation and communication and being clear with your partner that, you know, cause it, again, that's another human nature, nurturing, wanting to take care of. And I wanted to be the wife. I loved it. My mom did it. And, you know, so you watch what people are doing. And so this is one thing I tell my children all the time. And I always told them growing up is if something feels familiar, we're comfortable with it and you're doing it, but there's something in your stomach that's telling you otherwise, check it and think about it and investigate. Because a lot of times, and I told them, just because it's comfortable and familiar doesn't mean it's right. It could have been something you watched me do. And it doesn't mean that just because I'm your mom that it was the right thing. So if it's not sitting with you, but it feels familiar and comfortable, check that out. Check that, that, that you know, that, that's hard, to, that, that discomfort Intuition. and mm -hmm. comfort mm -hmm. through it, because there's something that there's a disconnect there. There's a real disconnect there. If you're not mindful of that, okay, I can do this or convincing yourself when you find yourself convincing yourself that, yes, this is, this is fine. This is okay. Those things, that's when you need to start watching. But for me, it's just before you get into the marriage, 
before you get there, have those conversations and, and really try your best, try your best to just do those things that make you happy because resentment is the worst thing for any relationship. Absolutely. Sandra, thank you for being the goddess of sparkle. In fact, I wore my sparkly diamonds. This is not real, but I love, (laughs) wouldn't this be great if it was real? But I, I love, you know, these little sparkles because they remind us of taking care of ourselves, nurturing ourselves, listening to our intuition, our gut feelings, our guidance. And it seems like you have done that and you're doing that to help others. If people are listening, watching, reading the blog, how can they connect with you? So you can go to my website, Cuts of Island. That is my website. Everything is there. All my programs are there. If you're going to social media, if you're going to Instagram, it's Sandra Rodriguez Bicknell. And you could send me a direct message there. If you have any questions, you want to ask me anything, that's great. And my email address is Sandra at cutsofadiamond.com. And I'm, I'm open to hearing from anybody who has any questions. Thank you I for sharing. Yes. It doesn't have to be recorded, but I'm just curious if yeah. maybe it's personal to ask or not, but um, you haven't given up on love and are you, have you found love again? And I, Good question. <laughs> so um, I have not given up on love. I know that love is coming. I know it's on its way. And I know that it's not going to be the right love until I am sure that I've checked my, um, my shadow, the things that upset me, the, the, my fears, and all the things that um, come up during those times of fear, whether it be in, in, in life and stress and work and all of those things show us what it is that we need to work through. And truly, I don't, I don't want to be in a relationship until I'm sure that I've touched on more. It's a lifelong journey. We'll always have things that we need to um, either correct or, or love or nurture or be aware of. But I, I have not given up on love. I'm excited about love. I have not been in a committed relationship since I left my, my last partner in 2016. And, and I'm excited about that, truly. Okay, okay. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Sandra, for joining us on Grateful Goddesses today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, favorite things, opening up to happiness and joy. Welcome, goddesses, to favorite things with our guest, Sandra Rodriguez Bicknell. So, Sandra, what brings you happiness today that you would like what to share with us? Brings me happiness today. Okay, so this brings me happiness today. This is a very old phone. Wow. Um, this was my dad's phone. Um, he was a superintendent of a building where I was growing up and he would, this was on his desk and he had all these incredible antiques and things that people would leave behind when they'd either move out or pass away that the family members would leave. And this was something that I just treasured. I remember going to his office and seeing it all the time and I've had it for about 15 years and I travel with it and if I move it comes along with me it's very very heavy but it's it's my favorite thing and it reminds me of so many different parts of my life and it brings me so much joy I feel like it's very symbolic of what you do connecting with people absolutely exactly it reminds me of the conversations of sitting yep. on the phone of seeing my mom talking to my grandmother or my aunt and, and that that direct the line and intimacy of communication uh, when I was growing up so many years ago. (laughs) And I want to add this. I don't know if your children, they're adults now. I don't know if my children, that type of phone would know how to use it. They, (laughs) I think they would be like, what? (laughs) How do you dial? (laughs) No. And you know what? I'm actually going to connect it because it actually works. Oh, fantastic. And it's so cool. But no, it's so funny that you say that because I was just saying, would you know how to, they probably say, Hey, Surrey, call. And it's not, you know, doing, oh, oh my gosh, my phone just answered me. That's hysterical. Wow. That is so. Mine responded too. 
That Peter. is so Sorry. scary. And that's yes. why this is gold. Oh, gold, gold. It, it centers us back to reality of where we came from. Okay, Camille, can you share your favorite thing today? Yes, yeah, so I am a pop culture junkie and I love getting like really random knickknacks. And so one of my girlfriends went to Megan and Harry's wedding and she's getting ready to move and just recently gave me all of the knickknacks she bought while she was there. So this is like my favorite things right now. I have like a whole shrine of all the things she bought me. She brought me back. And this is one of them. It's a little keychain from um, Windsor's uh, little. Um, oh, lovely. Gift With shop. The, the so, picture of, of the Megan. royal wedding. Like we woke up at four o'clock in the morning to watch it. My daughter and I and dressed in our crowns and it was a lot of fun. So it brings back like really cute memories, but also like I have like a whole shrine now to Megan and Harry. It makes me happy. Oh, fun. I love that. It's so fun. Moment. It took me a moment to realize that you were speaking about the royals. Like I was like, is that like Tony and Tina's wedding? I was like, thank you for a minute. And I was like, oh my God. Then I like, I was like, oh my God, this, that's huge. Well, right? they've now moved, right? They're, they're living yeah, in uh, America. In so Santa Barbara. Yeah. Not that I stalk them. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be completely wrong. I don't know. All right. For our generation, I mean, I watched Diana and Charles's wedding. Like, yep. did, did you guys too? Of mm -hmm. course. Too. I remember when, um, like, I remember where I was when I heard when she had passed because mm -hmm. oh, I grew up in Europe, so it was a really big deal over mm -hmm. there, the royal mm -hmm. family compared to here. But yeah, I know. Thank you for sharing, Camille. Rachel, Absolutely. what did you bring today? Okay. So this is. Um, this is a little bit more shallow than the telephone. We do this all the time. So sometimes it's like, you know, just fun items. That you we will like. never run out. You will <laughs> never, ever run out of favorite things. Never. Um, so this is a lip balm. It's made by Beauty Counter and it has peppermint in it. And I don't know if you know about Beauty Counter, but it's one of those lines where people sell it, you know, personally and you go to someone's house and they tell you a story like Tupperware. And, um, but this is all natural. There's no, like, that's the whole point of this line. And so like, I just, you know, put a little bit of pepper. I'm not wearing any lipstick today. The only thing I'm wearing is this um, lip balm. And it just feels so good and smooth and it's minty and it's natural peppermint. So like you kind of purse your lips, you look a little bit sexier with it on. I wear, I have, I have one of these in my car, in my purse, in my bathroom, like all the time. I've given it to my friends. I love this. Rachel, I was reviewing favorite things over the 30 plus episodes that we've done. And you have the best creams, rubs, scrubs, lotions. You just are a goddess of loving lotions <laughs> love that thank you i make my own oil like my own yes. essential oil blend for my skin like i love this stuff you I should do. start selling your stuff honestly and her yeah, sprays I'm, I'm spray. she has a, a whole room spray i mean we're gonna have to wow. it's amazing uh dina what did you bring um okay well i brought something and then karen you pointed something out when we got on the call this morning, so I'm changing gears because it makes more sense. Um, this little um, diamond a necklace, the diamond was my grandmother's wedding ring. Um, and my mom and dad reset it and gave it to me. I don't know what birthday, but um, I wear it all the time. I never take it off and it keeps me close to my family and my grandmother and it's really special. And the other thing we'll have to, I'll do that one another time. Well, I love, uh, that's the first thing I saw. And you said you wear it all the time, but maybe I was focusing on diamonds today because of our guest. And I just, yeah, the guest in the title. So thanks for right in. I brought something sparkly too, besides my little fake ring. Um, this is definitely more meaningful to me. It is a gemstone, which Rachel, you can probably tell me which one it is. It might be amethyst. Amethyst. It's like a natural amethyst with a little Canadian flag. And what's so special about this stone, I have many stones beside my bed, but this stone my son gave to me right before he moved to Toronto, Canada. I'm from Canada and I moved here almost 30 years ago. And I always thought my kids would just stay here, but my son went back. And it's so interesting how life works out. You know, you make plans 
and it just doesn't go as planned. But he's there, and this was his favorite beside his bed, and he gave it to me, and it was so touching. I said, no, 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 it's yours. Keep it. And he's like, no, Mom, it will remind you of your home and me, and, and it does, and I love it. And it's just very special to me, so... So beautiful. And it's sparkly. You know, it's always nice to have sparkle, whether it be in a gloss or a diamond or, you know, a memory. And um, I think it's really fun to share our favorite things. So thank you, Sandra, for joining us. Thank you, Featured Goddesses. And just have a sparkly day. Unleashed your inner goddess yet? Thanks for joining us today on Grateful Goddesses. We invite you to visit our website, www.gratefulgoddesses.com to access today's show notes as well as other helpful resources. Don't forget to leave a review. Until next time, stay strong and empowered to be a grateful goddess.